What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Luzanak. It's episode number 29 of The Climb and we resume our campaign in League Dirt. A campaign which so far is going pretty well. Uh, today we're going to be taking on Les Havre, who are our opposition. They currently sit fifth in the league and as you may have just caught a glance of here, we're currently in third. Although it is still early days, but we are only five games into the season. We can't afford to get too carried away, but you can see here our opposition we drew against last episode are currently in fifth, or no, sorry, sixth. So listen, like, they're pretty good, we're pretty good. Let's talk about things since you were last here, shall we? Because, of course, the transfer window has closed. You might be wondering, Jack, what late transfer business did you do? None. Not, none on the ins. None on the... We sold some players. Um, let's talk about them, shall we? Two of our youngsters, actually. Maguiara has gone to Twa uh, for a massive fee, really. 425k. Not a bad player by any means, but I always felt like his sixth stamina as a centre mid was always going to be a bit of a sticking point for me. It was something I was never really going to be able to get over. Considering he's injury prone and consistent, even if he has a little bit of potential, it's fantastic money to get in the bank. And the other sale that we've made is actually Bessie Cherry, who I didn't want to lose, but the chairman decided you don't have a say in this, Jack. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, but Francesco here, who is part Italian and French, he was part of our youth intake just last year. He's joined Lons for £215,000, but that could rise as high as 500,000 so I mean some pretty significant money in the end recouped over the course of the summer and well mainly through these two sales towards the end which contributed over 600,000 pounds I haven't invested any of that into the team my thinking really is that we hold on to it and maybe use it to upgrade the facilities and such down the line. That, feel, for me, feels like the right thing to do at this point. I'm pretty happy with the overall start in 11. We've started the season strong and I didn't feel a desperate need to go out there and splurge a load of money on a player for the sake of it. So anyway, since we're last here, we've kept a load of clean sheets and then, well, conceded a load in the most recent game that was a draw. But let's go through these. So the first game was against Le Mans and it was Kofi with the goal. An initial long throw that wasn't fully dealt with by Le Mans and, of course, against a team who were promoted with us last year. Year. We took the lead late on Kofi with the goal and there was no time to fight back. The next game we had was against Chateau, uh, a team who are long established in Ligue 2 and in this game Luis Carlos got a goal at the back post against a team who are very much predicted to finish mid-table. And following on from that, after, you know, one cross, uh, well, in came in a corner in the added time, and Garou was there for it. Of course, the player who we brought in to be the successor, potentially, maybe, probably, to Hugo Robert. And to be fair, so far, a goal and an assist for the centre-back. So, I guess he is channelling his inner Robert of sorts. But, um, no, he's done well. He's not developed that much, although it's still early day. It's September. We can't expect improvement overnight. But yeah, good performance from him there. And we followed up with another win, this time against Cannes. At home, a 1-0 victory in this one, a really good result. And we also broke our attendance record. 2,800 fans flocking to attend. A really, really good turnout. Cyprian David with the goal. A player who, I think, more and more I have to just kind of put faith in. A player who I don't feel like I've ever really given a fair chance. I can't tell you why I dislike him. It's not that I dislike him either, really. It's just that there's always been players higher in the pecking order, but he's pecked his way up to the top. And, uh, well, this season he certainly won't be having to wait until February for future league appearances. He is very much part of the first team in terms of how often he's playing. Anyway, most recently we took on Niort, a team who we were promoted with. And having beaten a few of the long-established League 2 teams, I really looked at this one as a very winnable game, even if it was away from home. In the end, it finished 2-2. Uh, Luis Carlos got us a goal, very similar to the one he got a couple of games prior. Ball crossed in from a corner, bounced to him at the back post. Kofi then got a really nice finish for us, put us 2-0 up. After 24 minutes, you think what on for a really good result. Unfortunately, that two-goal lead did not last. They scored in the 31st minute at New York to make it 2-1. And from there, we kind of hung on. I made a triple sub in the 81st with it, and just as you thought, well, the job's done... Papon turned up, squeezed it in at the near post, made it 2-2. And, uh, well, not only was our run of clean sheets gone with this result, but our kind of little winning run that we've been stringing together as well. That said, you know, away from home against New York, it's not a game I'm going to... I don't want to say I'm not going to lose sleep over it, because, frankly, they've not won a game yet this year. But it's certainly a game that we should be expecting ourselves to win. 
But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't go that way. And uh, right now we are performing above and beyond expectations. As you can see, we currently sit in third. We are one of only two teams unbeaten after five. Today we take on Harvard, who I've already mentioned. They're very good. Um, they've uh, won their first three games. The only team that they've lost to so far was Cannes, although we beat Cannes. You might remember 1-0. So despite the fact that we have played Le Mans and Nort and beaten them, and you kind of look at them, or rather drawn against Nort, but you look at them as games where... Perhaps they were easier points to acquire. The fact that we have got some points against the likes of Chateauroux, who have only lost two, and also against Ken, means that we are holding our own against the big boys. And, well, you might be wondering, Jack, how are you holding it against the big boys? I'll tell you how I'm holding it in kind of typical fashion. There's no, there's nothing fancy about it. There is, there's nothing fancy. It is just the way that we've been playing. You can see here, just looking at the overall number of appearances... I have uh, been kind of rotating the team around a little bit, but uh, at the same time, it is a fairly settled eleven at this point. It's also dawned on me here that I've set up the, I've kind of selected the preset kind of team selection from last season, and it's kind of unearthed just how much has changed this year. So many new faces coming in, um, but you can see here, just looking at the team on the whole, this is the the team that has largely played for us, which might strike you as a little bit of a surprise, I suppose, in some areas. Um, I feel like Fomba just didn't really hit the ground we're running. I was very, very excited about him, but he's not found his feet right away, which I don't want to say it's a concern, but it's something that obviously we have to keep an eye on. With that happening, what's happened is Luis Carlos has come in. You've seen he scored two goals already, teaching him the, the art, I suppose, of playing defensive midfielder. So far, he's putting some good performances for us, the Brazilian. Hopefully, he's going to continue to put them in and be in the right place at the right time for goals. Elsewhere in the team, Big Dub has found himself back in the starting eleven. He's not wowed me as of late, and actually, he came in more out of necessity than choice. Unfortunately, you can see here Nuno Cruz uh, only recommended to play 45 minutes. The young Portuguese player, a player who I would have really liked to have given a run at centre attack in mid, he got damaged knee cartilage about a month ago. He's been out for four weeks with it. Still not fully fit for today's game, but fit enough for the bench. Elsewhere in the team, though, it's kind of what you would expect. I feel like I'm actually going to start Kofi this game over Cyprian David. Uh, Julian Blaze has not started the season well at all. One assist in three games is nothing to write home about, but I feel like we need to keep faith in this guy. Of all of our players, he is the player who has most consistently improved over the last 12 to 18 months. We need to continue to give him game time, keep showing him faith. Despite our strong start to the season, I am feeling quite realistic with our expectations, thinking, you know what, top half finish would be nice. Let's use this as a year for development. On the flip side, Kofi has shown some really good signs of progress, already two goals to his name, which compared to his four goals in 29 last year, it's pretty blooming impressive. So hopefully he's going to be able to keep the performances going out on out on the right hand side. And well, you can see Manan is up front for us, but he's yet to score this season. It does make me wonder: should I shuffle things? Should I maybe just bring in Cyprian David? Manan has started four of our five games and hasn't really performed. I guess the logical thing to do would actually be to put David out onto the right, cutting in on his left foot, and then try Kofi out as the lone forward. And I mean, he's not great in the air by any means, but his jumping reach has shot up. He's had another little growth spurt as the 17-year-old. You can also see he's now capped at international level. Um, we have had a few instances where players have been away on international duty. It's one of the reasons Kahinde has only played four of five games. Yeah, unfortunately, players jetting off to all corners of the world had left us down a man for one of our games, although it was actually one of the games that we won, bizarrely enough. Kahinde's doing his thing as well. He has started the season well, a 7.5 rating in the league, plenty of teams sniffing around. I have no intention of letting him go. You can see an asking price of five million slapped on him. I think the biggest bid we had for Kahinde was £300,000 from Marseille, so... They're not wowing me thus far. Anyway, defensively, Hao Hao and Garo have started the season pretty well. Billingley on the right, no assists for him yet. Out on the left, Russo obviously was suspended. When he was out, we brought in NDIA, who, to be fair, despite declining a little bit as a player, actually put in some pretty good performances in the league. I mean, you can see here a 7.03. Um, that said, he is a bit of a step down from Russo, just in the direct head-to-head -head comparison. And I need to keep faith with Lucas, because I think he is the best left-back in the team. Hopefully, he doesn't get sent off today for a second live come in a row. That would be pretty, well, tilting, to be honest. And, uh, well, let's get into this game, shall we? I've not felt a need to change away from this formation. Um, of course, we were looking at signing Engessen, and if we'd signed another centre-mid, I perhaps would have been more inclined to 
maybe explore the strikerless route, but actually the way things have played out with Foma um, just not starting the season particularly well, and also we'd be deciding that spending a load of our wage budget, in fact making and guessing our biggest earner to sit potentially on the bench some weeks, wasn't the best investment, and cancelling that deal. Um, now, kind of, I'm back on the four two three one hype train. I'm back, all about this train right now. This is this is the train that we're on. I'm, I've bought my ticket. The four two three one I think is here to stay, at least for now. Obviously, Manan. There's only, well, he hasn't scored in four games and he's meant to be our lone striker. Kofi, of course, has been chipping in with goals. And while speaking of the devil, picking up the ball in a great position, unfortunately, Zinger makes a huge stop in goal for Harvard. It really bails them out there. In the first minute, they are absolutely bottling it at the back, trying to play it around. Can we score here? Big dub straight to Zinger's hands again. I mean, it was a chance, wasn't it? Kofi, he's already got a few goals to his name. He has been doing some really, really good stuff. It is worth noting that today's kickoff is the early kickoff. A win here, we would go top, although we will continue onwards to see how the rest of the results play out. Unfortunately, with our ongoing ground share, we have found ourselves playing later on than a lot of other teams. And I'm someone, and maybe this is just me, I don't like to chase. I don't like to be the team hunting down another team. I'd much rather be setting a high benchmark, and even if they've got the game in hand and you know with a win they can go above us, I'd much rather be in that position where you're kind of setting the bar and asking the other teams, how high do you want to jump? How high are you going to need to jump? But maybe that, maybe that's just me. I know everyone's a, everyone has a different opinion on that. Let me know, co comment section. Also, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm, so I don't care if you're on your phone, watching this at work, on the sly, under your desk, or on your TV in the living room. I know it's a pain in the ass to type on the YouTube TV app. Let, let me know, are you a chaser or a leader? Do you want to be chasing down the team or leading the pack to the death? Anyway, it's nil-nil here. Both teams having chances. They did have just the best chance of the game there. Um, despite the fact we've kept clean sheets, I'll be honest, it's not been super comfortable games. A couple of one nils, a 2 nil as well. And then, of course, the draw most recently. And, uh, well, that was a crunching tackle by Hal Hal, and it was a bit too crunching. In fact, it was Billingy tripping him from behind. Billingy, you absolute wazzock. Another fullback letting us down in a live com. Can Thomas help us out? Not with a penalty like that, he can't. That was an absolute peach of a penalty. Marvin Gapka placing it into the bottom corner, giving Liav the lead. And, uh, well, look at it, just slides it in. I mean, you're not stopping that, are you, as a keep? You're just not stopping that. Lovely goal by him, his first of the season. Their first shot on target. And I think with that, we have to get a little bit shouty-shouty. I don't want to overreact just yet. But considering we are playing a possession orientated system, the fact that we've only got 39% of the ball perhaps is a small cause for concern. But that said, we've been creating chances and they've not created a ton. We are on the attack here as well. Luis Carlos dinking the ball wide to Billingy. This is your redemption arc, Billingy. Whips in big dub with the header, big dub with his first goal of the season. Yet to get an assist, yet to get a goal going into this. If Cruz was fit, he probably comes in the young Portuguese player to play the centre attack in mid role, but he doesn't. He's not fit. He can only play 45 minutes. So Big Dub is there, and it's Big Dub with his slab of a forehead. Not an unfamiliar sight to the Luzanak faithful to watch him head in a goal. The centre attack in mid, he's absolutely loving it. And suddenly, you look at the, the match stats, you look at the scoreline, it just looks like a really good first half where hopefully we can take our lead and take this grip that we have on the game. And, well, execute a win, which, based on the number of chances we're having, you would expect us to at this point. Anyway, I'm going to make an early change here, which might seem a little unorthodox. But the change I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Nuno Cruz, and I'm going to bring him in for Cyprian David. The young Portuguese player, we need to get him up to match fitness quickly. We were told he could play 45 minutes at a time. Curious to see what he can do today. Apparently, Luis Carlos has been error-prone today. I mean, that makes me nervous. And you know what? We've got a, a ready-built player in Fomba on the bench who, when he plays, we actually drop the ball in a midfielder to a box-to-box -box midfielder. Does leave us perhaps a little more exposed at the back, but I feel like Fomba is just so good bringing the ball forward. He's so good athletically in such a complete centre mid that just kind of boxing him in as a box-to-box -box mid... Uh, sorry, as a ball in a midfielder is just a bit of a waste. Anyway, they've got a chance here. Thomas tips it onto the post. Of course, Thomas's loan expires at the end of the year. I am evaluating the options by which we could possibly sign him. His contract at club level is due to expire. However, um, the asking price they're slapping on him is in excess of a million pounds, which right now, despite all the sales we've made, is a little bit steep, even for my own standards. 
Anyway, half an hour left, 1-1. Both teams will feel like this game is there for the taking. Julian plays. We've not had a moment of magic from you in a while. Where are you going? Could this be the magic show? He gives it to Cruz. Ghosts inside, hits it. Oh my word, that was not far wide into the side netting. So, so close to the very top corner there. I mean, tw 20 minutes left. We'll just shout some more. Gee, uh, my French is getting better now after a few years. We just shout French at them. Ball whipped in. Samba, free header. Just over the crossbar. Did Thomas have it covered? I don't think so, but I'm going to claim he did. 15 minutes. Zinger clearing it for them. Straight to Cruz, though. Definitely not a 100% fitness Cruz, but fit enough to play 45 here. And uh, we'll give his legs a stretch. Fomba. Dinks it over towards Cruz. It's headed away, but only as far as Billingy. One assist to his name already. Could he get another here to Big Dub? Cruz hits it. Hits the woodwork. Oh, my word. Another effort from Cruz. Not dissimilar to the position of his last effort. Although, on this occasion, he hit the post rather than the side netting. I mean, he's getting slowly closer to the goal. By his third shot, he should be fine in the top corner. Kahinde Fomba on off the bench. Lamine Fomba... Disappointed by his contributions early on. Not uh, disappointed by that finish there. Lamine Fomba turning up at the back stick on the volley. And Hinde, if I'm not mistaken, with the cross in. It was headed away. Hal Hal picked it up. Went straight to Kahinde. Whipped across. And at the back post, Fomba is just lurking like a shark. I don't know why a shark. Like a shark under the water. Finn just showing slightly. And then suddenly, he was above water. He was mauling that ball. Finding the back of the net. It's 2-1. And with our last change, I'm going to take off Julian Blaze, who's looking a bit tired and on a booking. Drop Kofi to get inverted winger, cutting in on his right foot. And Edwin Manan. Manan, you've not got a goal yet this year. We've given you a four starts. This is your first appearance on off the bench. I'm not sure if I'm expecting him to score here. But as long as nothing happens, I'm perfectly fine with it. And indeed, nothing has happened. A 2-1 win. Fighting back from behind. Gahinde with another man of the match for his scrapbook. That is a huge result. A team in fifth. A team going very, very strong. And having gone a goal down, the character to fight back like we did and to see Lamine Fomba actually get the goal is big. I really like this guy. This guy is very good for this level. If I was going through my team, he's one of the few players alongside perhaps Kahinde where I'd be like, yes, players who could play in League 1 uh, potentially if we were to get promoted. Um, yeah, he's putting a huge performance there. Finally getting off the, the goal-scoring mark at centre mid. You can see with that result, we make it six unbeaten in the league. No clean sheet in two, but I'm not going to let that disturb me. And, uh, well, it feels like we're in a really good position all of a sudden, doesn't it? Anyway, in terms of when we're going to be back next episode, not entirely sure yet. I feel like the French Cup is a bit of a distraction this year, in all honesty. I want to focus on the league. You can see our next few games are against teams in the bottom half, and in fact... Uh, Ajaccio, who are currently in second, could be an interesting game to come back for in just four games' time. I'm conscious of the fact that this uh, season I would like to do a few more live comms for you guys. I feel like in previous years, you know, we've not always seen the big significant games. This is a big step up. If we are indeed going to maintain a promotion push, I want you to see and experience every twist and turn as it comes. And against Ajaccio, who currently sit in second... Could be a big one. Of course, we'll monitor things if they start dropping massively off the pace in the next four games. We'll see who else is maybe available. Dijon aren't doing too badly. Lorient are in ninth as well. Um, I mean, it's still early days, right? The dust has not really settled on the league. The status quo has not yet established itself. Anyway, what we'll do real quick is just hit continue just to see what the other games are. Ajaccio with a win here would leapfrog us to go back top of the league. So you'd imagine if they could win this game, they would be one of our big rivals this year. Are they going to get a win? Of course they are. 1-0 they win. Socho lose. Did Can win? They won 3-0. Dijon, how did you get on? They won 2-1. So all the teams in and around us winning. And, uh, well, you can see how the league table sits. It is very, very close at the top. We are now in third place. Lots of football to be played. We cannot get too carried away just yet. But hopefully... I'll catch you tomorrow where there will be plenty more football to be enjoyed. Anyway, guys, that is all from me today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, as always, do drop a like on it. As I said, are you a chaser or are you a someone who likes to lead the like the chase in a title race? I I don't know. I, I just I feel like both can be good, but I like hunting teams down sometimes. I don't know which I prefer. I'm, I'm going to go away and evaluate my life and decide. Either way, I'm just rambling on now for the sake of it. Let's wrap things up here. Time out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. It is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.